Let's give it up for Christina Chong. And I was fascinated to learn that you traveled quite a bit as a kid. So you grew up in Spain, Barcelona. Your family traveled a lot. And, and I want to come back to that in a second, but I, I want to start by saying you traveled a lot as a kid, but I found it fascinating when you said, but the appreciation and the awareness and the consciousness of it didn't come until later in life. Yeah, I think uh, I was I was very privileged to be um, the daughter of two very nomadic individuals. My dad was a sculptor and my mom was a translator and tour guide and worked for an airline. And back then we used to have free plane tickets just because we were related. So it was fantastic. Um, but I didn't really appreciate it. I, it was just... And I listen to the stories and, and, you know, your story and Hunter's story and a lot of the other ones that you've had on the show before. And they, they are catalysts. These trips are catalysts for a big change and a shift and, and, and a paradigm shift in, in these people. I don't really have that as a child. It made me who I am. I believe it was part of me from the get-go, but because I was young and I wasn't really aware, I wasn't doing it with an intention, I wasn't traveling, I was just along for the ride. The trip, whether I liked it or not, depended on whether I was grounded half the time or not. That's all that mattered at the time. You also, you also made a comment to me in the conversation that really stayed with me is you were happiest when you were then reading and, and really kind of almost researching some of these places you went later in life. Mm -hmm. So you were almost kind of, with like Hunter, you were manifesting without knowing like some of these places. Yeah, I think travel for me started in books. Uh, that's not the most, I think, uh, common answer, but it's that's how I traveled. I yeah. would have either picture books, coffee books. Those were my trips, and it was free. <laughs> well, so, and the reason I wanted to kind of start with that and really talk about those trips and the reading is that you really started planning this without even thinking about it because you've had so many incredible adventures. We're going to get to it, but I loved that you, you, without knowing it, you were creating that. But one thing I want to bring up is we talked about your parents and we talked about, you know, maybe you don't have that one moment that you can hang your hat on, like mom and dad did this, but your parents had kind of a mantra with you and kind of a, a thing that they would, you know, want you to figure out. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they pushed the travel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they, they encouraged it. They took me out of school uh, and very intentionally they thought travel would give me more, uh, survival skills, wisdom, whatever word they, you know, you want to supplant there than being in school for a week if I could then hand in my work and, and obviously catch up to the rest of the class. But yeah, they thought it was more valuable. So the whole thing your parents... The wanted, motto. Yeah, the motto. They wanted you to what? Figure it out. So figure it out. Everything was figure it out. It's part of their like scientific method as a philosophy kind of thing. They would, if I asked a question, we were on the beach and I thought, wow, are those waves dangerous for me? figure it out some parents think I mean some people think that's neglect fair enough um, you know <laughs> but uh, if I had a question about something um, oh you know how do I how do I ask for a dessert at this restaurant in you know Frankfurt and they just go like figure it out and I was three four and I would have to go up to the counter and I would have to like ask I did not speak German obviously um, I would have to ask for dessert in, and figure it out. A lot of hand gestures, which is why I talk like this a lot, <laughs> just so you know. Well, and I really love that. And that really just stuck with me from our conversation. And I, I, what I heard from that was you figuring it out and that whole wanderlust thing starting with you. So from, you grew up in Barcelona, but you guys moved around quite a bit. And you also got a chance to go to school, a couple of interesting places, Canary Islands, then off to Australia. And mm -hmm. that's where this whole love and fascination with the ocean, much like Hunter, you're drawn to the ocean. Yeah. So what was it about the ocean that, that brought you in and where were some of the places that you wanted to go? Uh, I was always, it always felt much like Hunter said, like home. And not because I felt more comfortable maybe in it, but just because I didn't care about the things that I care outside of the water. Mm. I didn't care about um, whether or not my friends and I were getting along or what my hair looked like or, you know, if I, I know said something feeling. stupid to that boy I liked or nothing mattered. I was in the water and that's that's all that mattered. And um, I wanted to study marine biology. So I went to Australia, James Cook University. I went there and then I started realizing that travel for me was it had to be with intention. 
So I think that for me, that was the catalyst. It wasn't on a trip, but it was realizing that I had taken these incredible trips and not really taken advantage of them. Mm. Um, which for a perfectionist is a uh, hell. <laughs> so I'm going to throw up a couple pictures and then I want to get to a couple stories that you told me that really stuck with me. Cause mm-hmm. I, I think, again, as I said, I, I think you're fascinating from the standpoint of you have a lot of really interesting things that you do and that you're passionate about. And I want to get into a couple of these things, but we're going to start to throw up a couple of these just adventures and things you've been on. But one of the stories you told me that mom was that, sorry, my, my mom's got a sidebar here. What was that? You good? <laughs> Okay, got it. Sorry. <laughs> Sidebar, mom. It's okay. Um, it's okay. It's mom. Uh, Dominican Republic. You told me a story about going to the Dominican Republic that kind of really like started that whole, again, I guess you were in the consciousness space of that experience. Yeah, I think the Dominican Republic was definitely one of the first times where um, I actually – Maybe my, my parents would go, my mom would take me a lot. We'd, we'd go a lot to tropical locations, always warm, always beaches for her to hang out. And um, for me, going and experiencing the, the people there and realizing at the time that we were all the same. Hmm. We all had the same concerns, the children there, and I had the same concerns. We wanted to play, we wanted to get along. Um, but we were in this environment that was so incredibly foreign. I can't remember what story I told you about the Dominican Republic, so well, I'm kind of like just rambling until no, it no, comes No, 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 you're good, me. you're good. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you a little It more. was fantastic, <laughs> and it was <laughs> a trip of my life. It changed me as a human being. You talked about like the wildlife experience, and this was kind of going to lead me down the path of like you being drawn, not just to the ocean, but just this, you, you work with great organizations, you have a lot to do with the wildlife, a lot to do with the ocean, but it was something you said about going to Dominican Republic where you made this comment about um, connecting to the wildlife, to the local community, and seeing how that experience, and just like the people um, from that side. Yeah, so sometimes, I think that I was telling you that when um, I was talking about how when we, we talk a lot about learning when we travel and, and being immersed in something and, and kind of what we get out of it. For me, it's also incredibly important to know the role that as travelers we play within that community and what we give and what we connect to. And we're also educating them on who we are as foreigners or as travelers or as people from other places because they are now going to represent, um, we are now going to represent to them that place. And in places like the Dominican Republic or in South Africa, or especially with youth, seeing how... um, disconnected at times they are with a lot of the knowledge that maybe we can bring to the table and we can educate them on and we can talk to them about and simultaneously how spiritually connected or emotionally connected they are with their environment was really interesting because I think that in our society, especially in LA, a lot of the uh, maladies that people suffer from, I think are a disconnect from nature. Uh, I really do. And we have so much information. We have so much knowledge. And yet we have, um, I think, very little awareness at times on how important it is for us to actually connect with nature and wildlife. Um, They, you know, they're concerned about whether, not whether their kid is looking left and right on the street, but they're concerned about, um, you know, if the kids are out in the water, are they going to get eaten by a shark if it's dusk? Is there a shark around? Are they going to get stung uh, by, you know, the wolf spider that, like, lives right inside, like, the hut, right behind, you know, in Santo Domingo, like, inside their houses? We're concerned about, does this person on Instagram, you know, belong on Dateline NBC? or so, Like, it's just different concerns, That's but possible. it was really interesting. So, so you start connecting. I want to start paying <laughs> So you start connecting all these dots. You start getting you know a little more aware and start looking at travels and and where you are now. I want to talk about programs and projects you are working on now, mm-hmm. so we can shed some light on that because you are doing some pretty awesome stuff. Can you share us? Yeah, I'm I'm very fortunate. I think through uh, my background in science, I've had access to very wonderful institutions and charities that do a lot of work around the world um, that have given me access to maybe an area or wildlife or a specific animal and species that uh, you know is is not readily available for just the general tourism. And I think being very concerned and aware on our impact and our role 
as tourists, as travelers, I hate the Mm. word tourists, as travelers is very important Um, because there are ways to get exactly what you want out of a trip. And we all travel with intentions, whether it's for work, whether it's because we want to be, you know, at at surfing at a competition, we're doing it for to meet new people or we're doing it because this place is on our bucket list. Um, We have an intention. And we can get what we want out of it. But if we just do a little bit of research and we can do it the right way. I see people go and go to Mexico and take pictures with black jaguar, white zebra, tiger thing, whatever it is. Like the guy, you know, with the cubs. And it breaks my heart because these people could actually go have those interactions. But supporting an organization that is really concerned with whatever feline bottlenecking and feline aids and what impact it has you can go and have these interactions that also combat canned hunting and kruger park you can do this the right way if you're just a little bit more concerned with how you go about it there's definitely one picture on the screen that's kind of jumping out a little bit at me it's the what? baby macaw, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you about. No, what yeah. is up with this? <laughs> it's a uh, tailless whip scorpion, actually, as my hair gets stuck in this. Um, it's a competition I have with my friends. Do not ask me why. This is what happens when you have a lot of entomologist friends. We have a chat to see who can find the biggest one in the Amazon and put it on their face. Uh, I hold the current record, obviously. Obviously. Um, but <laughs> it's a thing. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why, but so long as I win, <laughs> that's all that matters. <laughs> They're harmless. I think there's a Harry, I'm, I'm not a huge Harry Potter fan, but I think there's a creature in Harry Potter that's very similar to this and inspired by them. Yeah, they're nocturnal and they, they're harmless, but um, still not, yeah. Two seconds after that picture was taken, I was like. <laughs> yeah, that picture freaked me out. So you go from marine biology, being in the ocean, doing all this stuff to now you're this successful actress doing all this stuff. Where did that come from? Where is that just a passion that just kind of came? Where, what happened? I fell in love. It's not a very good story and it makes no sense. I just fell in love with acting. Uh, it was playful. It was fun. It was exciting. I got to intentionally fail and make an ass of myself and be a fool, which science does not really encourage. Uh, it encourages you to test things and be wrong and be open-minded, but it doesn't, my life was not very encouraging to just be silly and, you know, play. And that's what acting gave me. Nice. So why not? And now you're able to use your platform to then also use the science at the same time. What are you most excited about right now? What am I most excited about? Content with a cause, seeing people, content creators across the board infuse that content with a message or uh, something more than what's immediately in front of them. People that believe in things that are bigger than themselves. You guys all here being here thinking, having a philosophy, a shared philosophy for community, for travel, for whatever brought you here, that, that excites me. That's awesome. Tell us anything else you'd like to highlight for some of the work, whether it's some of the nonprofits or anything else that, that you want at least put on people's radars that mm-hmm. they should know about or places that they should know about to to learn more about? Uh, honestly, I mean, Earth's Oceans and Oceana are dearest and closest to my heart. They're just organizations that are doing incredible work, both at the grassroots and at you know the level of trying to change policy and legislature and things like that. So that's those are the causes that are really important to me. Um, I think, so remember D- District 9? Such a good, movie Mm. um and that movie is about the apartheid it's cultural 100 percent, and we don't know that because it's told in such an interesting way and there's a story and characters that you fall in love with and you're so invested that it's like almost by osmosis you're just getting all this like cultural background um I think that any organization and any creator and any artist and any person who is somehow infusing their life or their content with a story like that that can help other people they're they're the ones that i i would like to support so got it all of you guys what are your hashtags or what are your uh, instagram accounts let's follow you (laughs) great everyone just line up after she'll give you a follow it's totally great yeah but i'm gonna jump don't worry guys we're gonna have questions for you too and we're gonna do a speed round first Right? Should we do a speed I memorized out? Hunter's answers. Yeah. Antarctica. And a fun fact about Antarctica. Please. Do you want it? Yes. 
I just learned this. Um, so ar- the word Arctic um, shares a similar root with the word for bear um, in Latin, so Arctis. And it actually comes from Arctis, where there are bears, and Arctic, where there are no lacking of bears. I will never think about the Arctic and Antarctic the same again. Wow. That's going to kind of change a lot of things for me. Mensa. Yeah. Mensa. By the way, once again, it's holy. Yeah, yeah, you know, you are the first I'm Mensa. I'm not following you. Don't do that. Don't embarrass me like that. <laughs> any, any other cool fun facts before we jump into the speed No, round? sorry. Sorry. No, no. No, that's They're a great They're useless, one. but hopefully you enjoy them. Is that a Snapple fact? What's Snapple? Wow. Way, way over. That's... That was good, Matthew, though, but that's Snapple fact. So on okay, the, okay. Yeah. <laughs> on the top of your Snapple, they usually have, like, a fun fact. And moving on. Um, Is that, like, a, a popsicle stick? No, nah, it's a, the, the, the drink, the Snapple drink. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm not, I don't, we it's don't have them in Spain. That's all right. Sorry. That's all right. All right. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so with that, uh, give us a follow on social, and we'll tell you soon about the next Travel Talk. Yeah. yeah. yeah.